Hello. In this lesson, we will be learning about the brittle and ductile deformation of rocks. An example of ductile deformation would be rocks bending to create anticlines and synclines. You'll learn more about these structures later in this module. But the first thing we will talk about is when rocks experience brittle deformation, when the rocks break. Usually, when rocks experience brittle failure, seismic waves are released from the point of breakage. The seismic waves generated cause the ground to shake, creating an earthquake. That point of breakage is called the focus, or hypocenter, of the earthquake. A term you might be more familiar with is epicenter, which is the point on the Earth's surface directly above the focus. Soon you will be learning about those seismic waves that are generated during an earthquake, and you'll be using the seismic waves to determine the epicenter location of an earthquake. You will also learn how to identify faults created from earthquakes. But first, I want to spend a few minutes talking about where the earthquakes are located. Do you remember the location of the plate boundaries from an earlier module? If you don't remember where the plate boundaries are, you can refer to this map here. The plate boundaries are delineated in red. You should observe that there are various colored dots on this map of earthquakes. These dots represent foci, or hypocenters, of earthquakes that have occurred over the past 10 years. The different colors represent different depths of the foci of the earthquakes. What do you observe when you're looking at the different color dots? Hopefully, what you can notice right away is that most of these earthquakes occur along plate boundaries. You probably also observe that many of these earthquake locations are red, signifying a shallow focus. You can find shallow earthquakes along all types of plate boundaries including those that are converging, diverging, or transform plate boundaries. Different colors, signifying mid-depth to deep earthquakes, are mostly found along the edges of the Pacific Ocean and are associated with a subduction zone. You can also observe some mid-depth earthquakes associated with the continental-continental convergent plate boundary at the Himalayas. Because of the high occurrence of earthquakes along plate boundaries, it is reasonable to expect that anyone living near a plate boundary will have a high likelihood of experiencing an earthquake. However, the last thing I hope you notice is that there are a few earthquakes that occur far away from plate boundaries. We call these earthquakes intraplate earthquakes. About 5% of earthquakes that occur each year are intraplate earthquakes. Intraplate earthquakes are typically old faults that have been reactivated for a variety of reasons. Even though we in Pennsylvania may live far from an active plate boundary, we occasionally experience earthquakes. Have you ever experienced an earthquake? Some are too small for us to feel while others will create shaking severe enough for us to feel. Now before you dive into learning about how to find the epicenter location of an earthquake, I encourage you to go to the United States Geological Survey or USGS website and look up the most recent earthquakes and where they occurred. Were these recent earthquakes associated with a plate boundary or were they intraplate earthquakes?